Buongiorno from Italy! In our last video, we explored the super adorable town of Brescia and then drove to Lake Como for our very first Christmas market. And today we are giving you the inside out tour of our camper van that we have been using for the last three weeks here in Italy. our van. We didn't build it, nor do we own it, but we did rent it for an extended period here in Italy because one day we definitely want to do van life. And this was kind of a test for us. We wanted to see what we like and didn't like about this van, van life, and this layout in particular. And I think over the last couple of weeks, we've learned a ton. And today we want to show you exactly what we would keep and some of the things we would change about this van in particular. We rented a Weisenberg Kara bus with a Fiat Ducato engine with a manual transmission. Very important because I can't drive manual. <laughs> It is the first time I've driven anything this size. Okay, turn, 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 turn. This van is six meters long and 2.75 meters tall. It's huge. In fact, it's so big, we coined the term. Let's watch your butt. Clear on your butt. Watch your butt. Because the first couple of times I went around things, I kind of hit the back tires. Nothing bad, but it could have been a lot worse had we not been so mindful of it moving forward. So watch your butt, take the turns wide. It became something we lived by every single day. This is the cab. Nothing extraordinary or special per se, but there's a few things worth noting. And the first is that there's no rear view mirror, which I guess makes sense because it's a long way from this mirror to the kitchen, to the hallway, to the bedroom, and behind the camper van. But I did expect a rear view camera, which this doesn't have. So I basically have to rely on the side mirrors and- Hey, don't turn so much. You're so bad at this and an object sensor that beeps if I get too close to something when I'm backing up. The second thing is it's manual transmission, yes, but the gears are essentially the same for the most part. This van has six gears, so instead of having the reverse where it normally would be, it's gear six. To get into reverse is not difficult, but it is a little tricky, and we didn't know how to do it at first, but we did eventually figure it out. I think you do this. I think it's... Yeah, baby. Since I'm not driving at all, I have been able to make the seat a little bit of my home. And luckily there's tons of storage up here, which I wasn't expecting. We actually have three cup holders, two down below and one up here. We have two USB chargers, which is really nice to keep my phone charged while we're on long trips. And then we have a storage unit right up here as well. This is perfect for putting our toll tickets in so we know exactly where they are and we're not scrambling around like mad people trying to find them. Yes, that did happen. Oh my gosh, <laughs> so much is happening. We also have a little shelf here. I can just place my phone or extra batteries. Coolest feature is this phone thing. If we had more than one phone, it would be really helpful because we could just put one phone for directions and it would be popped up in the center and then my phone for music or camera or whatever we need. But since we just have one, we didn't really use it that much. And then in each door, there's a really deep pocket. So on Nate's side, we hold the electrical cables. On my side, we have our safety triangle and our jack and some other safety stuff. We also hold our window covers. So these window covers just snap on in the front of the cab and then they have magnets as well. It usually takes us probably two minutes to put these up every night. And they do a really good job. Personally, we don't like the snaps very much and we just rather have magnets everywhere, but it does stay up really well. And it's nice when we just park the car and leave for a while or when we're sleeping. Our favorite part of this van is the fact that we have swivel seats in both the driver's seat and the passenger's seat. And it turns around to this awesome dining room. So this is our dining room, extension of our kitchen, and our office workspace. We wanted a table area that was separate from the bed. We didn't want to have to set up a table or a bed every day because we knew that wouldn't happen as often as we wanted it to. So having this completely separate work area from our bed, since we are digital nomads and we work nearly every single day on our computers, was just essential for us. And this setup is really, really nice. There is a 
plug underneath the seat. So when we are hooked up, we're able to plug in our laptops and all of our gear, which we do have a lot of. Now on a normal sunny day, this part of the van is really nice because we have all the windows from the cab in here since there's not a retaining wall and we have windows on both sides. So there's a ton of sunlight that comes in here and we really don't need the lights on inside at all. Something that's really unique to our van that I haven't seen in a lot of other vans is that we have a step in our van. So the floor is technically on two different levels. The cab is up about six inches or so from the rest of the van. And it might seem like a little bit of an inconvenience, but it's actually really nice because it holds our internal heating, which does not come just from under the passenger seat like I see pretty often. We actually have about six different locations that the heat comes out from, and it is so much needed in this freezing weather. You can see my breath. That's why. <laughs> there is room for a wine cellar down here. It's a small space, but we could easily hold maybe six bottles of wine in there, which is really nice. Any storage you can get is fantastic. And of course you don't have to hold wine in there, maybe toilet paper or dry food. <laughs> Just beneath the two seats here is the spot for our furnace for the hot water and the internal heating, as well as the antifrost valve. Next up is the bathroom, which is probably the one that most people have questions about. <laughs> we have a full bathroom with a closing door, which is kind of nice, but it's kind of difficult that we have to be aware if the door is opening at any point. But tiny space, but it's a full bath, which seems crazy to say. We have a cassette toilet, which is only good for number one and not number two. We do have a full shower and a sink. The shower has the shower curtain that just pops up, so it's not a full wet bath, so not everything in here is getting wet. You're kind of just inside the shower curtain, which is nice, but also not that nice because I don't like touching the shower curtain. The faucet just pops out and hooks right up here, so you have a full working shower. There's also a huge mirror here, which I've seen a ton of van tour videos and a lot of people don't have that luxury. So it's right across from the toilet, so it's kind of awkward at times, but full large mirror, which I appreciate so much. Not even most hotels have that. We have these like bungee cord cabinets, which hold our shampoo and conditioner and our hand soap, which is really nice. And honestly, I'd put like my face stuff in here if we were living in here full time. And then we have this little like cubby, which I don't love because it doesn't have a drain. So we put our loofahs in here, but it kind of just like accumulates water. So you have to like rinse it out every now and then. And then we have full, cabinets down here which hold all of our extra toiletries and everything like that. Plus we just leave the toilet paper right on the counter here and haven't had any problems with it while driving. If we were getting a van we would definitely go for the compostable toilets which allow you to go number one and number two and that's been probably our biggest issue in this van is having to figure out like where to go to the bathroom. I know it's a little TMI but like it kind of sucks sometimes like you're out in this beautiful vineyard and you're like can't go in the van, can't go at the vineyard, like where are we supposed to go? So that's been a little bit of a pain in the butt. So while we're driving, we have it turned sideways and while we're showering as well, so it allows a little bit more room in here to stand and shower. But when it's time to go to the bathroom, you just turn this sideways and then open up the lid and open this small little guillotine is what they call it, which is really odd, but it opens up to the tank down below. And then you can go to the bathroom and you just make sure you don't throw your toilet paper in the tank, which is odd for us coming from America, but for the last two years, we basically haven't been able to throw our toilet paper in the toilet in South America, in the Middle East, in Asia. So we're pretty used to it. I just hung a little trash bag right here that allows us to throw or allows me to throw it away really easily. And then when you're done, you press this blue button right here that washes out the toilet to make sure everything goes down. And I just give it a second because the water kind of like flows down um, and you don't want it to get stuck in the toilet once you close the canteen again. And then you can wash your hands and we just hung up a couple of hand towels right here, which is really nice. I love these little hook things and I would have probably a million more in here if this was our own van. We have a window here as well, which is really nice after we shower to air out the place since there's not a direct vent in here, but we do have to make sure that we close it when we go to the bathroom. There's a screen as well as a full shutter and then 
this window actually opens up as well. The drains in here for the shower, there's two of them, which is nice, so it can drain either direction, but a lot of the places we've been parking in the van have been kind of crooked or slanted, so sometimes the water will just pull up in one corner where there is no drain. So it usually goes away once we drive because it's sloshing around, but we do have to be careful. So that's why we put a towel just right outside the door. So if our feet do get wet while we're in here, we can dry them off and we don't have shower water all over the van. Now for our hallway, which barely exists, but we do have a couple of towel racks here, which is where we hold our bath towel and then our hand towel for the kitchen because, well, the hallway is in the kitchen and the bathroom and the bedroom. <laughs> There's also a small closet right down here. It's really an odd spot. We don't really like it that much. It's not that long. So we kind of just shove my backpack in there and then a couple of our jackets just over the rack. But ideally, we just wouldn't have that at all. There is a ladder here for the bunk beds. And then there's a small compartment with a USB charger. So this compartment just holds our first aid kit perfectly, as well as an extra headlamp, just in case we need to see something in the dark in the middle of the night. And the USB chargers work anytime, even if we're not plugged in. So that's great to charge our phones or anything while we are in bed. Now onto the bedroom. This is our bedroom. We have a smaller than a double bed. Also, it's a really strange hexagon shape. It's shorter on this side and longer on this side. So we decided to put our heads this way and our feet this way. It's about six foot wide. So we both fit comfortably sleeping straight out, which is really nice. However, this bed is horrible. We slept on some really bad beds before. This is the worst one ever. So first order of business when we get a van, comfortable bed. Also, I don't like that there's two walls here. So it feels like you're separate, which Nate kind of likes because we get up at different times. So he's able to kind of be in the front of the van without disturbing me. But I love having natural light come into the room and there's no windows here and you don't get any of the natural light from the front. However, we do have a ceiling light here, no fan or anything, but just a ceiling light with a shade and a screen. And then we have two windows on the back doors. And of course, it's really nice to open up the doors. There's not a ton of storage back here but there is some so we have these little hanging pockets I would say and this just has some of our sunscreen bug spray and this holds my makeup and hairbrush and stuff like that. Overall it's pretty nice there's nice lights up here these are just touch lights that turn on and off and then this is an LED strip so if this was bunk beds you'd have light on the top and for the bottom bunk as well. And then we have a USB plug back here as well as a full outlet. We don't really charge anything back here unless we need the front plug for something else. We'll throw everything back here. Personally, I don't really like this bedroom setup that much because storage is so important in a van. We think that the layouts that have the cabinetry all along both sides of the bed roof would be perfectly fine since I do have so much space here. I don't feel like I need that extra space right at the edges. Also, of course, we wouldn't have these weird bars so we could actually like lean up in bed because right now that's nearly impossible. This is, for lack of a better term, what we call our garage. It sits just beneath our bed and it's basically just an open space for bigger and bulkier storage, I would say. We have two suitcases underneath here, as well as my backpack that we carry during the day. This is our propane tank. This is basically where all of our gas comes for cooking and heating and warming up our water, which at this time of year is freezing. And I promise you it's freezing because we have had issues with the propane tank on this rental. And both of us had to take freezing cold showers first thing in the morning. It is important to always have a full supply and a backup at the ready. Just about everything we use to operate and utilize the van sits on the driver's side. This is the electrical. It just picks up, you plug the van in, and then you plug it into the source of electricity. Seems simple enough until you drive off while you're still connected. I did that. I also picked up the live wire, electrocuted myself just a little bit. And this is our cassette toilet tank. Basically just pulls out, you dump it, rinse it, and put it back in, you're good to go. And then this is our gray water dispense, which is all our dish water, shower water, and sink water in the bathroom. It goes here, and we have to go to designated disposal spots, open it up, at least that's what you're supposed to do. However, this fan has a leaky, water faucets so wherever we go it just leaks. 
Last up is the diesel tank. And you have to use your key to take out the actual gas cap. The diesel is the cheapest gas here in Europe, but it's 650 a gallon or 162 a liter. It's very expensive, but it has lasted most of our trip. I think we put in about $200 in gas for three weeks. So it seemed really expensive at first. 113 euros. We're never getting a van. But it did last us. This is a big van. The only thing on the passenger side of the vehicle, which I think is probably good since it's our freshwater tank, it's 120 liters, is right here. You have to have a hose to fill up, which some of the campsites we've been at have hoses and others don't. It's full. It would have been really nice to have our own hose so that we didn't have to worry about that kind of thing. For example, where we left this morning required a hose and where we're staying tonight requires a hose. So we're kind of out of luck here in this location, but in other areas we've had a hose and been okay. Up top here is what I like to call mission control. To turn on the master power here in the cabin, just hit the giant power button. The second button turns on the water in the cabin, so in the bathroom and then the kitchen sink here. And then on the left side, we have our battery monitor for the cabin. It runs on short power, so to be able to use the actual outlets in the cabin, we need to be hooked up to electricity. And if we're not hooked up to electricity, the outlets don't work. When we're not plugged in, we can go about 24 hours with normal electricity use before we have to plug in and recharge the batteries. We also have a button that monitors the van battery. We check it, but for the most part, that really doesn't move around too much. And the third button that we have on the left is to monitor our freshwater tank, first and foremost, after one push, which lasts us maybe three days with regular use of cooking, a shower for me. Alicia doesn't shower. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> and then if you tap it twice, it shows your gray water levels, basically letting you know you need to dump soon or you have a little time. And we have one USB outlet and there's a cubby, which when we're charging something, we just kind of put it in here to hold it. Then we have our heat. This is our hot water heater and our heat. It's like this combo unit, which is supposed to be really nice to have because I think they can be separate sometimes, but I don't know because this is my first exposure to this. It all runs off of the propane tanks in the back and just runs on like a simple dial. And it goes from one to five, but ours only works on three to five, which actually works out because it's freezing right now. So we're usually keeping it there anyways. And if you just want hot water, you can do that as well. And if you want both, you can also do that. To my right, we have the overhead compartment. We just keep things like clothes and toiletries up there. So it's pretty safe stuff to be moving around. Some people might be super stoked to have a bathroom on a moving vehicle, but I love having a kitchen. And this is a very functional kitchen. It's not the largest, obviously. We are in a tiny home, but it has everything that we need. So I love this kitchen because first of all, it looks right outside. If we had this door open, it would be a nice open space, but we also have a window here. And the nice thing is all the windows in the van open. so we can get a nice breeze through any of the windows. And they have screens, including the door here has a large screen. What? Oh my God, what a good idea. And shades, so we don't have to put up shades every night. Granted, they are extremely cheap <laughs> and somewhat difficult to put down, but they do work when I fix them up about every two days. So our kitchen is pretty small, but luckily we have the table for counter space. These close down, so we do have kind of a counter space with these glass tops, but when you're cooking, they're usually open. So under the first one, we have a two top gas stove burner, which I love. I love cooking on gas so much more than induction. And when you're in a van, having those induction stove tops just takes so much power. So even though we have to have the propane in the back, it's been really nice just be able to cook on the gas. These are pretty small and kind of close together. So it's kind of tough cooking two pots at the same time, but we were able to cook a three course meal on it. So I'd say it works pretty fine. <laughs> Under this one is our sink. So we're able to pop up this faucet and have a small little sink in here. It's not too deep and not too large. A plate doesn't even fit all the way into it. And this faucet only moves up and down and not side to side or have like a pull out, which would be really, really helpful. This is where we store our fruits and veggies that don't go in the fridge, some dry items and like all of our spices. 
all of the cabinets in the van come with this little like locking device and these will stay shut which is really nice while we're driving around because sometimes you can be on like a bumpy road or something or, or make a sharp turn and you can be sure that everything in here is in here except one of these <laughs> down here we have two drawers and one like cabinet thing so in our top drawer we have our cooking board and then we kind of repurposed the silverware container for um some of our glass bottles so we put our olive oil and our balsamic vinegar and our coffee in there and then we just have plastic drinkware and plates and bowls because that's what our company gave us to use during our time in the van it's nice because they can drop or fall around or whatever and they don't break obviously but they're not the nicest to like use all the time and no knife that came with the van and we didn't decide to like splurge and buy one and then just down here in our second drawer these are really deep drawers which is nice so we're able to kind of mix stuff up and we found a good system that works for us there's also a divider in here so half of this drawer is our pots and our pans and our french press and then the other half is more like dry food and snack storage the hardest thing i found in the van is like where to put the food because sometimes you have so little and sometimes you have so much and we're snack people so we need snacks like easily accessible so this drawer was really nice because honestly you can just grab snacks from any of the seats without having to get up it's embarrassing i know but come on reality <laughs> and then down on the bottom it's just like a cabinet that opens up and we have some of our cleaning supplies our bags and uh any extra like water or soda that we had that we hadn't opened up yet in the kitchen is kind of like our control panel for our light i know we have the mission control but this is where we actually turn on and off the lights that run through the main cabin normally we have these off just because it's also in the back and the front and we just use these little touch lights that are in both the dining area the bedroom and here which are really nice to have so you can kind of just control how many lights you need on which is essential when you are not plugged in and you really need to control the power you're using the bathroom light is out here which was really strange to us but honestly we've gotten used to that too just traveling because everywhere in europe seems that they have the bathroom light outside the bathroom i, I don't really know why we have a full plug here so i guess you could plug in like a toaster or a blender or some other like kitchen appliance in here and then we have a car charger port i guess you could put a usb i don't really know what that's for i don't know why you would use that but you couldn't and then our fridge i am so happy we have such a large fridge this is an 80 liter fridge it runs off 12 volts of power and we haven't noticed it take like a lot of power from us when we're not plugged in granted we have been plugged in almost every single night because we need the outlets in the van but this thing holds so much we have a latch on it so it doesn't fly open at all and it's actually like a really good latch which is nice because we've had this thing stocked so we have have three spots in the doors which is really nice for like condiments and stuff and then we have three shelves and two veggie doors they're not like humidified or anything like that if i was better at meal planning and grocery prepping we could go like a week with everything in here we just wouldn't have all of our drinks as cold as like we probably would like but there is room and then there's also a freezer we don't freeze a ton of stuff we usually use the freezer for ice and ice cream sometimes but i do love having the 80 liter fridge really nice last section of the van is undeniably something that everybody has but maybe not willing to admit but we're proud of our junk drawer we have snacks cards cords sd card chargers camera straps okay. and then over here we just have a couple like, open shelves we don't love them but they do have a little bit of a lip so you can put things in there that hopefully don't fall out it's honestly just been a storage place for anything else we can't find room for Okay, it is six degrees outside right now. So we're going to end the tour here so we can turn the heat on. But we hope you enjoyed the van tour. I know it's not our customized van tour, but we hope it still gives some idea of what these things look like and where they can be improved. So we hope you liked the video. If you did, hit the like button below. And if you want to stamp your passports with us again, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Good night. There's a... Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> ah, I'm super stoked to have a full-sized, no, full-sized kitchen. LOL. As well as an extra headlamp. Oops, I just hit myself in the face. To control everything on the inside,
in our last video, we explored another gorge. Where were we yesterday? <laughs> and then working our way down from... You like took such a big breath. I'm cold. Right there. 